Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been working on the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of this book the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. In addition to the vocabulary, if you need help in the math portion of the exam, you will find that we have already solved every single math problem that you will find in this book in the series of math from day number 1 through 50. Just type in HESI Math Day 1 all the way up to day 50 and you will find solution as I said to all the problems. In addition to that, if you feel that you need more help with the math, if you need more problem, more practice problem, you will find that the math that appears on the T you will find that that is very comparable to what you will encounter on the HESI and there are 80 videos in that series you can avail yourself to those as well today is our vocabulary lesson number 23 let's pick up from where we, where we left off on day number 20, 22 the very first word we have today is number 122 the word is Very simple, very straightforward pronunciation. Renal. What does it mean? Renal means renal. Renal means having to do with kidneys. Having to do with having to do with kidneys. Or if you like, of or relating to kidneys of or relating to kidneys and what you will find in your line of work what you might find is something like this where somebody might speak of an, of an acute renal failure acute renal failure let's learn this word acute 123 Acute, as you know, we put down pronunciation of every single word, every single word, no matter how simple the pronunciation is. Acute is always pronounced. It's an adjective. And what does it mean? Acute renal failure. Acute means sharp. Sharp or severe, if you like, or intense, or intense. It can also be used to mean extremely sensitive. One speaks of acute pain, acute failure, sharp failure, severe failure of kidney, intense failure of kidney. Acute also has another meaning. It is used in mathematics, which, is, which does not apply here at all, obviously. But since we're talking about the word, let's, let's learn the other value. In mathematics, an acute angle an acute angle is something less than is something that is less than 90 degrees. The opposite of acute in mathematics would be the antonym would be obtuse. Obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees. Obtuse angle is something that is. I'm just going to use ditos. It's more than 90 degrees, and of course you know that the word obtuse as it, as it is used in English language has nothing to do with angles at all. If something is described as obtuse, that means it's not clear, it's hazy, it's not, it's convoluted, it's difficult to understand. Obtuse. But in mathematics it means more than 90 degrees and in that context the antonym would be acute. Same as this one. Acute angle or acute pain. As you will see in your line of work as I said. Let's continue. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this word acute. We need room, obviously. What is an acute accent? Let's learn it, shall we? It doesn't hurt. Which, of course, has nothing to do with uh, at all with, uh, with the nursing, but uh, it doesn't hurt to learn. 124. 
cute accent. Is a mark, is a mark that looks like this. That is placed that is placed on top of a vowel. On top of a vowel, usually the French put it on top of E. Usually on top of E. But there is no reason why it couldn't appear somewhere else, but uh, typically you will find it on E. And what purpose does it serve when you put uh, that ac acute angle on top of E? What does it do to the E? Well, it makes the sound, it makes the sound long. It makes, it makes long E, long E. I'm going to give some examples and as we look at some examples you will begin to understand that you have seen this acute ang uh, acute uh, accent many a time, many a times. Even though these are words from French but then of course a lot of the words in English language, about 60% of the words in English language have the French derivations. These are French words but they are used in English language all the time on a regular basis such as words such as, let's erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this thing, we already learned it so that it's not crowded. Words such as cliché, cliché. You see the acute, acute accent? How about the words such as forte? Forte is your strong point. Or we speak of per se. Here's another one. If somebody makes a good point in the argument, somebody makes a good point on the argument, we say touche. You see it's a long, long sound, touche. And all of these have all of these have acute accent. Acute accent. The French call it French call it. French we refer to this as accent aigu, accent aigu, as opposed to, as opposed to accent grave. Accent grave would be something like this. Accent aigu. Accent aigu is this, but that's what it is. It comes from in English. We of course we say accent, acute accent, accent. Agu, accent grave. Let's continue. That was a bit of a side uh, side note here. Let's continue with our thing here. So we have words like cliché, forte, per se, touché, and there are many many words like that where if the last e is to be uh, elongated, the sound uh, uh, is not fourth, it's not fourth, it's not touche, it's not cliche, it's cliché, cliché, the long e. Is what you indicated with an accent, accent ague. Let's carry on. 125. 125 is something that we did, uh, that we have learned earlier in a different video. I'll tell you in a second. We have two words here. It's pronounced sight, sight versus. this side. They are both pronounced in the same way. They are both pronounced in the same way. So here we have two words. Here we have two words that have different spellings. They have different meanings. They do not mean the same thing. They have different meanings, different spelling and yet they are pronounced in the same way. Such words are called homonyms. Homonyms are two words that are pronounced in the same way despite the fact that they have different spelling and different meanings and we learned this pair of words in our lessons on homonyms. This was homonym number 54 we learned uh, on the part part 5 of 10. There is a series of 10, 
10 videos you will find in the same in the same uh, playlist under Hesse vocabulary words or regular regular, regular series you will find also on regular vocabulary words 10 of them uh, 1 through 10 uh, on homonyms and in day number 5 we learned this pair of words sight sight let's learn their meaning what does it mean what does this sight mean this sight right here means a place or a location a place or a location and this side means to mention to mention or to quote to mention or to quote so for example one might say one might say here's an example why was why was this why was this side as in location as in location, why was this side not mentioned? Not, not, not cited as in mentioned in the file or or a document. You're looking at a document. You're looking at a file. And all the other locations are mentioned, but for some reason, this this one particular location has been left out. And the person is asking you, why was this particular site not cited? Site and site, S-I-T-E, location. Why was this particular location not mentioned in the file? Site and site. Let's carry on. 126. 126. Adjective sub ling guel sub ling guel sub ling guel sub sub ling guel. What does it mean? Sub ling guel means exactly what it says. It means situated. Under the tongue, so situated under the tongue, or on, or underside of the tongue. If it's located on the underside of the tongue, situated under the tongue, you say it is sublingual. Sublingual. Let's move on. 127. 's word this word is a little tricky it has two different pronunciation depending on how it is used depending on which part of the speech it is used as it's pronounced supplement month if it's a noun and if it's a verb the pronunciation changes a little bit instead of instead of month it becomes meant supplement what does it mean to sub to supplement? To supplement means, we'll learn it in a second, it's a word. Let's erase this part, we don't need any of this now. So one more time, Sup supplement and supplement. Supplement and supplement. Supplement, verb, as a verb, it means to add to, 
to augment or to or to increase or to increase the part time job that he has part time job that he has is not his sole income is not his sole source of income it was just meant to it was just meant to supplement his pension the part time job part time job is not his sole source of income that was not his only source of income it was meant simply to supplement his pension he has an income from pension and this job this part time job was simply meant, simply meant to add something to it to increase it a little bit to augment it supplement let's learn the word augment shall we Let's learn the word augment right here. One twenty-eight, and it's pronounced. It's pronounced as you can see. The very first syllable is og, og, even though it's a u, og, and then ment. Augment is the verb. What does it mean to augment? It means exactly like this one: to make something larger, to make larger, or to increase something. To increase something in size or number or strength to increase something in size or number or strength is to augment it is to supplement it augment we have one last word 129 is the very last one let's learn that for next 129 mean to suppress something well it means to end something it means to put to put an end to on we need the rule to put an end to an activity or to do away with to do away with to to abolish to abolish in practice to stop to stop a practice or custom to abolish a practice or a custom it can also mean to withhold to withhold from disclosure or publication if you if you're suppressing something if you're suppressing a, a bit of news or if you're a politician and if you want to suppress some news you're preventing it from being published you're preventing it from 
being disclosed to the public to prevent something from disclosure or publication also means also can be said to, to, to be suppressed. So suppress can be used in several different ways. But the interesting is interesting thing is that all of these different different uh, contexts that you see here, where the word suppress can be used, as far as you're concerned, as a nurse, you will probably see the very last meaning of the word suppress, which I have not written here, which I'm going to put it on the top, the one that interests you, the one that the one that you're likely to encounter in line in your line of work, which is simply to to stop, to stop, or to arrest. Arrest and stop mean the same thing. To stop something or to arrest something means the same thing. To stop something or to arrest something, such as a cough, such as a cough, etc. Which is why the medicine that is one that is one one uses. Uh, one man, one man has cough. Is called a a cough I hope and pray to God that I spell it correctly. A cough suppressant. A cough suppressant is so called because it suppresses the cough. It suppresses the cough. It arrests the cough. It stops the cough. It arrests, stops it. So suppress means to put an end to something, an activity, to do away with something, to abolish a practice or a custom, or it can be used to withhold an information from dis from disclosure. It's, it's an embarrassing bit of information. You don't want it to get out. So you suppress it. You prevent it from disclosure. You prevent it from publication. And lastly, it me it suppresses simply means to stop something, to to arrest something, such as a cough, and hence, and hence the term that you hear in the medical field, a cough suppressant is the medicine that one uses when one has a cough. All right. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.